In this video, which is part one of a mini video series, I'll show you how I dyed all of these handspun yarns using natural Bengala mud dyes. Before we start dyeing, I wanted to tell you a little bit about these dyes. Bengala mud dyes are made from iron oxide, which are pigments found in soil. These earth-based colors are some of the oldest known natural pigments in the world, and have been used by humans for thousands of years. Some examples include the famous prehistoric cave paintings in Lascaux, France, which are over 32,000 years old. I bought these three dyes on my trip to Japan several years ago. They're made by a small family-owned business that has researched these ancient techniques and developed a wide variety of dyes for at-home use. I decided to dedicate a whole weaving project to these special dyes. I started this project by making around two pounds of yarn using some gorgeous undyed wool that I got secondhand, which I spun into yarn on my Luet S10Z spinning wheel over the course of a few months. To add some texture to this project, I also decided to include this super fluffy mohair yarn, which I also got secondhand. I wound the balls of yarn into mini skeins to make the dyeing process a bit easier. The first step in this dyeing process is to soak the yarns in a prefixer solution, which is sold with the Bengala dyes. This step isn't mandatory, but it helps the dye stick to the fibers and makes the colors darker and brighter. I weighed out an amount that was 3% of the total weight of all of my yarns. I'm only dyeing around 430 grams of yarn in this video, so that ended up being around 13 grams of the prefixer. I let all of the yarn soak in plain water for a little while and then added the prefixer. I then put on gloves and kneaded the yarns in the solution for around two minutes, then drained and squeezed the water out of the yarns. This whole prefixer step is a bit tedious, but I really wanted my yarns to be as deep and rich in color as possible. The first color I dyed was this gorgeous yellow. I started by filling a container with enough cold tap water to completely cover the yarn. I'm only using containers and utensils that will not be used for food, for safety reasons. I then poured in a few tablespoons of the Bengala dye mixture enough so that the water was opaque and saturated. I submerged my handspun wool into the dye bath and gently massaged the yarn to help the color penetrate the wool. Because I'm not working with any heat, I wasn't worried about felting my yarn, so I could really get in there and mix things around to make sure that the color was reaching every part of the yarn. I then scooted it over to make some room for a skein of the mohair and I continued to massage the yarn for a few minutes to help all the colors stick. I then left them to soak in the dye bath while I dyed the other colors. The next color I used is this purple dye. It doesn't look super purple in the pouch, but I trusted the label that it would turn my yarn purple. I treated this dye color in the exact same way as the yellow. I diluted the dye in the cold water, submerged the yarn, kneaded the yarn to make sure that the color reached every part of it, and then let it sit in the dye for a bit. I thought this color in particular was really interesting because in the pouch and in the dye bath, the color kind of looked like a combination of brown and pink. It kind of reminded me of a chocolate raspberry dessert, which is my absolute favorite flavor combo, so I didn't mind at all. As you'll see in the later clips, the color definitely changed a little bit after drying, which was a fun surprise. The last color I used is this beautiful orange. Once again, I treated this dye color in the exact same way as the last two. I also made sure to rinse off my gloves between each dye bath to make sure I wouldn't muddy up the colors by mixing them together. Orange is such a tricky color because some shades are really beautiful and wearable, and some are definitely not as much. I absolutely love this shade of orange. It's such a happy color, kind of like a perfect fall pumpkin.
Once all the yarns had been sitting in their dye baths for a little while, I went back and gave each one another mixing, before gently wringing out each skein and then hanging them up to dry in my bathroom. Now that I had six skeins of solid colored yarn, I wanted to play around with making some variegated yarns. So I made a triangle with my three dye trays and straddled one skein of wool and one skein of mohair across them. So around one third of each skein was in each dye color. For the part of the yarn where the colors met, like this part in between the orange and yellow, I wanted to create a blend of the two colors. So I dipped this section in each of the dye baths and then squished it in my hands to mix the colors. After letting the yarn sit in the dye for a little while, I gently wrung it out, which I tried to do carefully because I didn't want the colors to get all muddy. Once the yarns were all dyed, I had a bit of color left over, so I decided to use them to help give this tablecloth a makeover. I love this tablecloth, but I accidentally stained it pretty badly a while back, and I didn't want to just throw it away because I love these hand embroidered flower details. So I've been using it as a drop cloth for my messy art projects and have been embracing the stains and turning it into an art project of its own. I gave it a quick soak in the prefixer solution, tied it up, and then squeezed the leftover dye onto it to make a really simple tie dye. I wasn't aiming for perfection here, I just kinda wanted to go for it and make something fun. For this dye to work properly, the dyed materials need to dry completely before rinsing them. So after I took the skeins out of the dye baths, I wrung them out and then immediately hung them up to dry in the bathroom overnight. Once they were fully dried, I rinsed them out in cold water and eucalyptus wool wash and then hung them up again. So basically our bathroom was totally taken over for a few days, but that's okay because the colors were so pretty. Also look how cool the tablecloth turned out. And here are some close-ups to show you how the rest of the yarns turned out. I honestly can't pick a favorite color, but I think I'm leaning towards this orange yarn. Which yarn's your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna see what these yarns will become, hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification so you'll know exactly when part two is coming out. And I'll see you in the next video.